National Record Store Day 2010 is Doc West, local DJ legend. As a matter of fact, you've won how many Whammy Awards as best DJ in town now? If the Beatles were to pick a number, what would it be? Number nine? Number nine. Okay, nine. All right. <laughs> Nine-time Whammy winner for best DJ here in Fort Wayne. And Doc, um, you and I go back about 30 years, roughly. Is that right? That is correct. In, in the businesses. Yeah. And uh, you're originally from Columbus, Ohio. You started working for Rock 104 about, uh, what year was it? 79. 79, so 31 years ago. And I came down here in 1980, and you were one of the first guys I ever met when I came down here. And uh, I was still working at Slatewood Records at that time. There's an interesting story about Slatewood and Rock 104. Would you like to explain that real quick? Well, with Slatewood and Rock 104, the uh, Rock 104 might not exist if it weren't for the employees of Slatewood Records. They convinced our owner at the time that he should consider doing rock music, and so he did it 7 o'clock at night, thanks to Eric Johnson and also uh, the owner of Slatewood at the time, Dan, Dan. Dan. And what they did was they got him to try it, and he tripled his ratings at night in three months and then eventually decided it was going to be the 24-hour day format after that but it was because of Slatewood Records and of course back in those days the uh, record stores were the gurus of music of rock music and when you went in there the guy behind the counter uh, he was everything but the swami he was the guy that <laughs> turned you on to everything he knew the answers to any question you had and of course they were the catalyst for FM rock radio mm -hmm. And uh, we've worked together on a lot of projects through the years, Every, everything from bringing in a 38 Special or a Foreigner to um, Joe Bonamassa. Let's talk about Joe Bonamassa. I know that's one of your favorite projects, and uh, Joe's played in our stores before. And why don't you tell us how Joe started? Well, I t I'm, I'm going to give you the real story. The real story is that Joe came out, and uh, it was on, I think it was a new day yesterday, that he uh, covered uh, Jethro Tull did some cover stuff and it was a retro feel when Joe came out it was like a young guy uh, doing that but before that I, I should back up a little bit as I always do he was in Bloodline okay okay in Bloodline it was Joe Bonamassa and he was the only guy with no Bloodline to him he was a child prodigy guitar player mm -hmm. since the age of four had played at the age of 12 with B.B. King Wow. and wow. what happened was Joe joined up with the son of Miles Davis the son of Barry Oakley Jr. It was Barry Oakley Jr. of the Allman Brothers, uh, his son, Barry Oakley Jr., and also uh, Robbie Krieger's son uh, in the band. They called it Bloodline. Joe was the only guy with no bloodline to him, no heritage, <laughs> and, but he was the prodigy, and that's uh, he first played here when he was 16 years old at Picasso's uh, reception center. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he's gone on and done it the hard way, played 300 gigs a year, mm -hmm. and now he's played the Royal Albert Hall. Right, with Eric Clapton, he's, I understand, just recently. Eric Clapton, yes. and finally he's been reunited with B.B. King on right. his new release called Black, Black Rock. Black Rock, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, Black Rock, the number one selling uh, CD at Wood Nickel Music That's correct, that's yes, our number one seller right now. And I understand, uh, the other day you told me that he was ranked as the top guitarist in the world. Which magazine was uh, Once that? again, Guitar Player Magazine ranked yeah. him number one. Yeah. Yeah. And Joe hopefully will be back. Right now he's booked until spring 2011. Wow. But hopefully uh, Joe will be back and he always gives credit. He says if it weren't for Fort Wayne, Indiana, I would be a guitar player for a famous musician, a singer or somebody. But he goes, thank God for Fort Wayne because <laughs> it kept me on my solo career. Right. And right. now he is the number one guitarist in Europe. Wow, uh, you that's, can you can go to Greece, Italy, wherever, and Joe Bonamassa is and we the were, one. And we were one of the first markets ever to, to work with Joe. And I, I remember when he first started he out. He played right here. He should, right where we're standing. That's yeah. right. That was one of his gigs. Um, let's talk a little bit about Doc West a little bit. Um, I had a few questions for you. Um, you've been to hundreds and hundreds of concerts in your lifetime. If you had to pick one and say, "I'd like to go back and see that concert again," what would it be? Wow. <laughs> that's that's a big question, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'd probably like to go back to my first concert. And that was? The Doors, okay. August 3rd, 1968, Cleveland, Ohio Municipal oh, Auditorium. Okay. Okay. I'd like to go back there because it's the reason I'm standing here today. Okay. I've got The Doors tattooed on my arm, on this arm. I've got Rock 104 tattooed on this arm. And I would like to go back 
and experience that show, which is actually on videotape, on the Love Me oh, Two Times video. Oh, okay, okay. They videoed that night. Wow. wow. And um, I would love to go back to that show, 1968, August 3rd. And if, if you, um, you've obviously played thousands and thousands of songs on the radio, if you could pick out maybe three or four classic albums that if you were stranded on a desert island and that's all the music you could have. On a desert island? Well, it, okay. you know, well, what would they be, do you think? What would they be? On yeah. a desert island, I would have to put in there Bob Marley. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Whatever, I don't know. you got to have Bob Marley if okay. you're on an island. <laughs> okay. I would also probably uh, put on there uh, Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. Okay, okay. And also The Doors' L.A. Woman. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. And when Doc's at home, since he listens to rock and roll all day, if you could just lay back and, and just listen to something at your house that's totally different, what would it be? I'll tell you exactly what it is, and you know what that's like. Yeah. Because you do this all day long. Yes. yes. Uh, I love music without words, and I name my daughter Jazz okay. because of my, ah, okay. my love for jazz music. And one of the keys to the doors, actually, is their jazz influence uh, via John Densmore, their drummer, and it would be uh, jazz music. I'm a big fan of uh, Chick Corea and uh, uh, Stanley Clark and Mahavishnu Orchestra. Okay. That's my, my, my when, I'm, when I'm home alone, that's yeah. what I listen and some to. Some people will be amazed to hear that because of your, your classic rock heritage. And Miles, <laughs> well, in the old days on uh, FM rock, Progressive rock. Yeah, we played uh, Miles Davis mixed in with uh, the Almond Brothers wow, back wow. in the day. Yeah. It's too bad we don't have that anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, it's uh, it's evolved. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of today, um, I know that you spent thousands of hours in music stores in the past, record stores and so forth. What what do you see as being valuable about music stores today, independent retail? Well, independent retail today is is uh, I see it going full circle. I see the big boys, the box stores, are getting out of the ballgame. Okay. And uh, the record stores, uh, today it's the guy behind a counter that really makes it. It's just, I call myself a musical waiter. That's what I do. I serve up music. And a good waiter brings you back to the restaurant. And the guy behind Tim Hogan, who you've yep. got here, and yep. yourself, yep. it's your passion that brings us into the store. Mm -hmm. And that's what the independent record store has today. As well as it's just, I mean, it's mind-blowing, the artwork, when you go through these albums and the creative uh, liner notes. I don't know if you know this, but Patti Smith, before Patti Smith became an artist, she was she wrote liner notes for Columbia Records. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, and um, uh, it, there's a lot more artwork, especially on the vinyl, that is very, very inspiring. And music is magic. Music is yeah. magic. The yeah. bottom line is, you're going to go through your life, hello, you're going to go through your life, you're going to have some pitfalls. You're going to you're going to stumble. You're going to fall. Your marriage is going to go this way, and you're going to go that way. <laughs> but the bottom line is, the song remains the same. And so, I envision music many times as like a guardrail. And a lot of times, you hang on to it, whether it be Ario Speedwagon's "Time for Me to Fly" or the door is the end. Right. There's a time in your life when you're going to go back, and that song you heard it when you were a kid, and you embraced it. But suddenly you're going to go, wow, man, that is my life yeah. in that song. I've heard that song a million yeah. times, and I love that song, but I am living that song at this point in my life. And that's part of the magic that an independent record store gets you into, because when you go to the box stores, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, when you're sitting there amongst the cantaloupe and whatever else they sell, uh, that's a different ballgame. Right. This is our life, and, yeah. and music is magic. and. Uh, like I say, the the people at the counter are really what makes the difference. Yeah. Okay, Doc. Well, thanks again for, for stopping by today, and uh, uh, good luck with everything in the future. And it's been been wonderful. Thirty more years. Yes, thirty more years. Okay. <laughs>